benefits, but you get beneficial effects. Not only don't you get side effects like you do with sunscreens, necessary evil sometime, by the way. Sometimes you absolutely need them if you don't have a choice. You don't want to burn. But with topical antioxidants, you don't get the toxicity and you get extra benefits. You get anti-aging benefits. You get wrink anti-wrinkle benefits. This is why nutrients are so superior to drugs. And this is why it's so impossible for me to f understand how a kindly, well-meaning doctor, and they're kindly and well-meaning often. You know, they got into the health profession to help people. How can these people go with the, the, the toxic pharmaceuticals before they use the nutrients? The protective effects of nutrients that you get, the protective benefits of nutrients that you get in addition to the, the specific effect you're looking for, it's so overwhelmingly superior, it makes these things so overwhelmingly superior to drugs that it's a non-starter. It's a no-brainer. At least start using, if you need drugs, you need drugs, okay? If you want drugs, nobody needs them, but if you want them, go for it. But at least give the nutritional strategy uh, an op uh, uh, a chance. The protective effect that melatonin has for skin cells and for cell membranes and for blood fats and for diabetes and for neuropathy, you know, why would you use anything else? And by the way, this includes cholesterol. Yes, cholesterol. Why would anyone ever take a statin drug until they use melatonin first? Melatonin protects against high levels of cholesterol. And bonus, melatonin keeps cholesterol from going rancid. One of the problems with cholesterol is that it goes rancid. Now, I, I'm not a big believer in that cholesterol theory, as you know. And I don't think anybody who really understands how the body works is going to be a believer that nonsensical theory that it's cholesterol that causes heart disease. But there is a problem with rancid cholesterol. It's called oxycholesterol. Now, oxycholesterol may be a problem, and this is where melatonin and other antioxidants can be some, become so important. We're going to talk about vitamin E here in the coming days, and vitamin E protects one of the, its major roles. It, much like melatonin, it protects fats. Cholesterol, rancid cholesterol, that can be a problem, and melatonin protects against cholesterol rancidity. It lowers cholesterol overall, and it protects against rancidity. So again, why would a doctor, well-meaning doctor, kindly doctor, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna lambast physicians, why would they go with a statin drug before they decided or at least tried to use melatonin? Yes, melatonin lowers blood cholesterol. Tell that to your doctor. This is from, uh, where I got it here? I'm collecting all these melatonin articles. Melatonin reduces cholesterol accumulation and pro-oxidant state induced by a high cholesterol diet in the plasma, liver, and probably in the heart, too. That's from the Journal of Pineal Research, April 2004. Serum cholesterol and lipid peroxidation, that's rancid, rancid fats, are decreased by melatonin in a diet-induced hypercholesterol, uh, hypercholesterolemic rats. They feed rats lots of cholesterol and see what happens. Well, melatonin lowers their cholesterol and stabilizes their fats. That's also from the Journal of Pineal Research, April 2000. All right, I'm gonna stop talking about melatonin here, I think. Thank, yeah. We're, we're gonna talk, oh, touch on it a little bit tomorrow, but I wanna talk about vitamin E and a couple other things as well. All right, we'll take your phone calls when we come back. You're listening to The Bright Side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Don't go away. we got more good health information coming at you right after this. Okay, we are back on The Bright Side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific and 10 to 11 Central Time, 24-7 on our archive page, brightsideben.com. You can also find us at uh, benfuchsarchives.com. Thank you to Peter in the UK for setting that up. And... Uh, also, uh, you can go to my blog, pharmacistben.com and criticalhealthnews.com and check out our posts, which we uh, try to update regularly. Thank you to John T. Collier and Robert Lundgren for setting those up for us. And if you're interested in checking out my skin health posts on uh, truthtreatments.com, you can also find our truth treatment products, retinol 5% gel with a big old dose of vitamin C. No preservatives ever in truth treatment products. No fragrances, no wax, no fillers, no nothing you don't really need to have on your skin. Truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Okay, 844-236-6010 is our number. Just a couple more things about melatonin. You need your B vitamins to make melatonin. Don't forget your Beyond Tangy Tangerine. Remember, melatonin is not a nutritional supplement. You need your Mighty 90 nutrients with your melatonin. 
And you need your Mighty 90 nutrients to help you make melatonin, particularly the B vitamins and also zinc and magnesium as well. You can get melatonin, of course, in foods too, as we said. And uh, milk in particular, cow's milk, unpasteurized un, uh, cow's milk. I think pasteurization probably doesn't do the melatonin content any good, but this is one of the reasons. Everybody thinks it's the tryptophan, but maybe the melatonin in cow's milk that makes it so relaxing and uh, such a, such a uh, sleepy time kind of uh, beverage, if you will. Okay, 844-236-6010 is our number. Tom in Ohio, what's going on, man? Welcome to the Bright Side. Thanks for taking my call. Hey, Tom, what's going on? Uh, so uh, this just happened yesterday, and uh, I was listening to Joyce, and your your show came on, and I'm like, oh, let me give them a call. And uh, so thank you for taking my call. This is perfect sure. timing, I think. Sure. Have you not listened before? Uh, this is the first time? Uh, Have you heard the show me? before? Have you heard my show before? Uh, yes, I, oh, okay. yes, I have. Yes, I have. Okay. Go ahead. So I um, had, had some stomach pains yesterday, and it triggered me to 2013 when I went to the doctor for diverticulitis. I, I didn't know what it was. I'm like, oh, my gosh. I called my wife. Please come home. I'm in pain, and this is not just gas. This is not just the stomach ache. So she took me in. They admitted me. And uh, I did not have to have the surgery like both my parents did, where they had three feet of their colon taken out. That's awful. So we got to it. Got, we got to it in time. And uh, he just said, after that, I've been great for two years now. Uh, no seeds, no nuts. Uh, stay away from popcorn and stuff like that. So I've been doing that. Uh, the holidays have started this year, though. And I think I've been maybe having too much with the food and stuff like that. Because I have friends who have had bouts with it. They're just like, yeah, I still eat nuts. I still eat popcorn and stuff. And they just have these bouts of pain. So I had one today. And I, uh, yesterday, and so I went to my doctor today, and he gave me Augmentin, actually the, the generic version of amoxicillin. Uh, I'm, trying, I'm reading it right off the bottle, clavulinate potassium. Yes, uh, Augmentin so, is, is an enhanced version because the amoxicillin doesn't work anymore, so they have to enhance it with clavulanic acid or clavulinate or something. They call it Augmentin. It augments the, the amoxicillin. But anyway, here's the deal. You're going to make things worse. Yes, you, may need, okay. you may need an antibiotic. I don't know if you have an infection or not. And, and antibiotics... And, if you have an infection, you need an antibiotic, okay? That's yeah. just how it is. You got to kill the bacteria. It's an unfortunate solution, but you need it. So here's the problem, though. Diverticulitis, diverticulosis. Uh, diverticulosis is when you get these pouches that form in the, in the colon. Uh, and in, in the osis is uh, non-symptomatic. And you won't even know if you have diverticulosis. You may not even okay. know. Diverticulitis is itis bad thing. It's, it's when it gets infected, and that's when you get a problem. So you, diverticulitis is the real problem. Diverticulosis okay. is asymptomatic. I, I shouldn't say that. Diverticulitis is the, is the that's when you scream. That's when you, you get the uh, infection and the inflammation, and it's very painful. So here's the deal. The reason you get the pouches is because you got a sick colon, because you're not taking care of yourself. I'm not beating you up here. I'm just trying to be honest. No, I understand. Real, okay? So Thank you. The, the intestine's messed up. You got pouches. That's not good. So yes, you gotta, if you have the pouches, the seeds and the fiber and all those things they're telling you to stay away from are going to get caught in the pouches, but maybe we should get rid of the pouches. Right? <laughs> right. You think? Right. <laughs> so this yeah. is my beef with this medical model. As I say, sometimes doctors are kindly and nice, but they're boneheaded when they do this kind of stuff. So here's what you need to do. You need to love your colon, okay? And that means eating less food, number one, eating more liquid food, number two, okay? You, uh, drinking liquid food, soups, smoothies, that kind of thing. Uh, number three, using probiotics and fermented foods and veggie juices, the combination of probiotics, fermented food, uh, fermented veggies in particular, and veggie juices not only gives you the bacteria, but it provides a healthy environment for the bacteria to thrive, the good bacteria. And that augmentin, by the way, is not going to distinguish between the good bacteria and the bad bacteria. So after your augmentin, you want to make extra sure you're doing this because you're going to make matters worse. You know, right. as I say, if you have an infection, I'm not telling you not to take your antibiotic, but you're going to make matters worse. So when you're done with it, you really got to start taking care, okay? The, the strategy of giving somebody an antibiotic when they have diverticulosis is a strategy of making you a medical award of the medical model. You understand? You're going to be now a child and your daddy's going to be the doctor. That's mm -hmm. what you're set up for when you take an antibiotic for this stuff. All right? I'm not telling you not to take it, though, because you may have an infection. But the idea of killing the bacteria is setting you up to always have to go to the doctor. 
because you're going to keep having this problem. So you need to make sure you're loading up on probiotics, veggie juices, especially celery juice and spinach, which are loaded with nitrates. Then uh, they can provide a healthy environment for bacteria and the fiber as well. Uh, juicing is going to be to your advantage because it'll grind everything up. And then. Um, and then also your Mighty 90 Essential Nutrients, that goes without saying. And then things that coat the intestine, aloe, uh, noni, mucilaginous stuff. Uh, if you're using longevity, the Fucoid Z. Anything that has a coating quality, a gummy mucilaginous quality, cartilage kinds of things like bone soup. Hyaluronic acid, wonderful supplement. That can be helpful for you. Gelatin, the glucogel caps. You see how we're working here? Yes. Okay, so it's, I'm giving you some ideas, but you can take the ball and run with it once you get a sense of what we're talking about. You want to love your colon, eat less, drink, drink as much nutrition as possible, use your Mighty 90 nu essential nutrients, coat the digestive tract. These are all the strategies you want to do. And then once you heal it, and you, it heals, diverticulosis heals, you know? So you don't, you're not condemned. You can heal this thing, and then you can start eating as normal. You know, uh, I shouldn't say it's normal. You still got to be careful how you eat, but I don't know what normal is for you. But you, you won't have to uh, worry about, what, uh, about fiber and nuts and seeds, perhaps not as much or not at all. Okay? Uh, fermented that helps food you. Where you were, yes, with fermented food, were you re referring to like the apple cider vinegar? With apple cider vinegar, vinegar will help. I forgot about that. But no, I was thinking more along the lines of miso, tempeh. Um, uh, fermented beets, fermented pickles, fermented cucumbers. Get a book called The Art of Fermentation, Sauerkraut, Fermented Cabbage. Get a book called The Art of Fermentation. Has really easy to un easy, it's easy to understand, has really easy to use recipes, too. Thank you right. very much. This really helps out so much. Good deal. Take care, man. Take care. Have a beautiful, I hope everything works out for you. All right, let's go to uh, Mike in California. What's up, Mike? Welcome to The Bright Side. Hi, hi, Ben. How are you? Hey, I'm doing good. What's okay, going on, bro? Okay, I find you're great. Okay, I'm in good health. I'm in my 50s. I'm 5'9", 150. I just did a you know, yearly physical. My HDL is 110. My LDL is 85. My triglycerides in the 40. My question with you is regarding... Hello? Hey, I'm here. I'm here. Oh, testosterone and, and thyroid. I started the two point. Okay, we got to take a break, though. Mike, hang on. Testosterone and thyroid. We'll answer your question when we come back. We got a commercial. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to the Bright Side. We'll be back right we'll after this. Don't go away. Okay, we are back on the Bright Side. Eight four four two three six sixty ten is our number. We're talking to Mike in California. Sorry to cut you off there, Mike. Uh, thi I heard thyroid and testosterone. Okay, I've been taking 2.0 for two months. 2.0, oh, yeah, beyond tangy tangerine? Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. and I, I started eating like five to six eggs a day for the last six weeks. Okay. So I went in so much, so um, my cholesterol, um, I wanted to, uh, I feel a difference libido wise, you know, That's with awesome. testosterone. Good deal. Uh, I wanted to find out what's some other good foods to boost the testosterone. And what about if you want to get your thyroid up? I know there's like seaweed and stuff, which I don't, I'm worried mm -hmm. about. You don't want to think about it that way. You don't want to think about it that way. Seaweed okay. is definitely important and iodine and all that. But you want to go just do the simple things for overall health. As far as your, uh, as far as uh, the libido thing goes, uh, the best thing, or for testosterone, the best thing you can do for testosterone is reduce your sugar intake. That's the mm -hmm. fastest way to raise your testosterone or, or make your body more sensitive to testosterone, is lower your insulin or make your body more sensitive to insulin, I should say. Actually, there's a relationship between insulin and testosterone, but over time, we don't, our body stops listening to insulin. So resensitizing your body to insulin by lowering your sugar. That's Got job that. number one. Got For anybody, anybody who's interested in boosting their testosterone as they get older, that's job number one. Sugar is anti-testosterone because of insulin resistance, okay? Mm -hmm. So you probably noticed, Mike, you got some belly fat going on that no, you didn't have I'm when you were a kid? No, I'm 5'9", 150. Okay, no so when, but you have more than you did when you were a kid. Well, I, I, when I pinch, there's not fat there in my belly. Okay, then you're, then you're one of the lean ones, and that happens occasionally. But for most folks, you may be already have enough testosterone. For most folks, they'll notice they get belly fat as they get older when they didn't have it when they were younger. That's a sign of insulin resistance. Your body's not listening to insulin, and because body f uh, estrogen's made in body fat, that makes you more estrogenic, and you get this downward spiral. But it sounds like you're not on that track. It sounds like you're good. How's your well, hair? Tell me about your hair. Uh, you mean in my head? Yeah, in your head. Uh, I've lost a little. Okay, and my, my blood sugar is like low 90s. Do the sweeties? Should I be taking sweeties? Well, or hang on, hang on. Don't oh. digress here. Okay. Uh, let me just ask you about your hair. How's your okay. hair? Is Pretty it thinning good. at all? What? Just is it thinning? 
Just a, just touch. a touch. Okay. Are you wiry? 